In Jesus name we pray. Say this louder than anyone around you. Powers. Assigned to redraw the map of my destiny. In a negative way. Can you shout that loud? Fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Masekate la kaya boshende center. Powers are signed to redraw the map of my destiny in a negative way. Let the power fall down and die. In Jesus' name we pray. Say glory. Assign to my head. Can I hear you shouting this loud? Wake up by fire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decree it. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be surprised that this section is now 70 days prayer and fast. But the backwardness, the stagnancy, all the problems of the black man can be traced to that section. God hates idolatry with perfect hatred. And the punishment for idolatry goes to four, four generations. So the only people who don't need the prayer is, are those people that four generations back your family were born again, they were Christians, and you don't need the prayers. And there is hardly that kind of generation in Africa. This is why that session is in the prayers. A lot of people are receiving release as they pray the prayers. This is why with fire and with power, I want your voice to roar like fire and like thunder in this prayer. Ministry of Foundational Idols. In my life, expire in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we are gathered here this morning because we know you are our rock, you are our strength. There is no God that can deliver like you. Lay your hands upon us. Anoint us by your power. Speak to our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. God bless you. It's important to be very attentive to this morning's school on Sunday. Very, very important to listen carefully with the inner and the outer ear. The University of Spiritual Babies. The University of Spiritual Babies. This is why you must listen to me very carefully. In the book of Galatians, chapter 4. It is good for everyone to open to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. The University of Spiritual Babies. Galatians chapter 4. From verse 1. If you are there, say yes. If you are not there, say wait for me. And we shall wait for you to get there. Galatians chapter 4. Are we there now? Okay. Now I say that the air that is the child of the king, the prince, the one who is to inherit the throne. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. He as the inheritance everything the father has has been handed over to him houses, cars, buildings it belongs to this heir but the bible says as long as he remains a child it does not differ from a servant 
That is, being a child in the spirit converts you automatically to a servant. Let me make that point again. As far as you remain as a child in the spirit realm, you are a servant, a slave. And so, if there is any command that should be given to you as a Christian, the command is that you must grow. You must grow. Refusal to grow means enrollment in the school of slavery and bondage. If a two-month-old baby inherits the father's property, the houses belong to him, the cars belong to him, everything belongs to him, but as long as he remained a two-month-old baby, it does not differ from a servant. He cannot even help himself. If you put that baby out there on the street, the baby stays there on that street until somebody helps the baby. This is why, as a matter of urgency, you must grow. The reason many are going for deliverance is because they have refused to grow. They have refused to grow. If you confront somebody who is stronger than you, and the person takes you up in the air, smashes you down, breaks the bones, and you spend two, three months in the hospital. If they say, go and confront the person again, they say, no, 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 no. I can't go and fight him. This is the secret, beloved. Look at verse 2. Say, but it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed the father. Even so we, listen again, even so we, when we were children, when we were what? Children. We were in bondage under the elements of the world. Under witches, wizards, problems, terrible things. The elements of the world controls you when you remain as a child. Hearing comes the challenge. And here you have to listen to me very carefully. No matter how great your destiny is, no matter the kind of powerful prophecy you have seen about your life, no matter the kind of spiritual family background you have come from, no matter whether your father is one that founded churches in Nigeria or all over the world, no matter how great your spiritual future looks, no matter the kind of potentials God has deposited into your body, no matter how powerful the kind of revelation you are receiving, no matter how great the prophecy that they have prophesied upon your life, even as a child. No matter how powerful the visions you have been having about your future is. No matter how great those who are surrounding you, who will help you are. And listen, no matter the number of mountains you are going to pray, you are going from one mountain to the other. No matter your Christian background. No matter how long you have been in Christ. No matter the number of spiritual gifts you have. No matter the authority you now presently have in Christ. No matter how long you have been coming to church. No matter how, 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 what kind of functions you are carrying out for God. No matter the kind of things that you see in your future and you are happy to walk into it. You remain a servant as long as you remain a child. You remain a servant. Controlled. Manipulated. Pushed here and there, raped, abused, even cut down sometimes. Because one problem, you have refused to grow. And when you don't grow, there is another problem. You become stagnant. When you are stagnant, there is another problem. Those you are in the same class will go ahead of you. Those that are behind you will catch you up. That's the problem. And if you stay too long there too, you enter into another level called decay. Decay. Can you raise up your right hand? And with as much anger the Holy Spirit can put in your heart right now. It's the power of spiritual decay. I am not your candidate. In the name of Jesus.
This is not a day to negotiate. Bapata setende kia. Rima poli katana. In Jesus name we pray. Listen carefully. Very, very carefully. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. He said, nevertheless, yet I live. He said, but the life I live now, I live by the grace of the Son of God who died and shed his blood for me. That is the old Paul that witches used to attack. Crucified. The old Paul that they used to press him down on his bed. Crucified. The old Paul that they pursue here and there. Crucified. The old Paul that kidnapper will slap in the chest and will become vegetable. Crucified. Say so now there is a new Paul. Those things can't catch him again. The reason the enemy is embarrassing you and pushing you here and there. Because you have refused to grow above their level. Only a mad a mad goat will summon the elephant into a contest. The disgrace will be obvious. You could be boasting, but when the moment of truth comes, the enemy flees. The reason deliverance grants are jam-packed is because many have refused to grow. Instead of growing, many hand over their destiny to a prophet somewhere. Mountain prophets have confused so many lives. Vision, vision, vision. See, what did you see? What did you see? Baba, what did you see? What did you see? When the Baba has seen absolutely nothing. But because we were putting the man under pressure, he has to tell you that he is seeing something which is not your lot. And since you have accepted it, the angels put a stamp on it. This is the problem. I pray that somebody here will understand me. And would make a decision as from this morning service that with all the strength in me, I must grow. I cannot remain a child and expect to enjoy my inheritance. There is a large university which is called University of Spiritual Babies. Plenty of believers there. It is obvious. Let's not deceive ourselves. It's obvious. That maturity is far, far, far from many who claim to be Christians. Far. Ah. Many of us do not grow in inner health and maturity as we grow in physical body. There is a difference between horizontal growth, getting fat, and vertical growth, growing towards God. Very few Christians, listen, oh, very few Christians, including pastors. Oh, Devote time to study the word of God. Devote the kind of attention and time that the word of God needs. Very few Christians devote adequate time to the word of God. The, the time they devote to the word of God is a lot less than what they devote to worldly studies and professional training. Forgetting that you can have the professional training, you can have all those training, but your powerlessness may kill you. I studied in the University of Lagos here, my undergraduate degree, first degree. When we entered into the campus in those days, people like us were regarded as small, small boys. I had people of 36, 32 years old in my class. Well, I was around 16 or 17 or something like that. We were considered completely too young to come to the university. There is a practice, a practice. In the night, people go to the lecture rooms to read. I went there once or twice. What I saw there taught me a deep lesson. I found people trying to read. They put their legs in bucket of water. Because they didn't want to fall asleep. I found married women who have come to the campus. Some of them pregnant. They come, they want to read. They sit on water bottle. Warm water bottle to remain awake. Then, I don't know whether they still sell it now. There is a drug they call alaboku. Some swallow alaboku and black coffee in order to just remain awake. 
I saw a man almost as old as my father studying to get a degree. He, he, he drank too much alabu kwan coffee and blood was coming out from his nose because he wanted a degree. You can see the efforts they were putting in just to get a worldly degree, the degree that will end the day a priest stands at your grave and says, dust to dust, ash to ash, finish. Will to God that our priorities will change as believers and we will see great things happening. The writers of the New Testament in our Bible, they frequently lament about the lack of maturity in the Christians for whom they were writing. Spiritual maturity is important. It's essential for internal health. It's essential for you to be able to have right attitudes. It's essential for you to be able to make right decisions and for entrance into divine life. Spiritual maturity. As far as you refuse to enter into the school of spiritual maturity, you're a student in the universe of spiritual babies. Christian maturity is not old age. Not old age. Like the words of that are my, like my teacher in school, who used to say that if beard signifies intelligence, the goat will be a genius. Gray hairs and spiritual maturity are not necessarily united. There are plenty of foolish old men and stupid old women. The fact that a person is growing in age does not mean that he's progressing in spiritual maturity. Spiritual growth is not measured by the calendar. Our age is beyond our control. But our spiritual maturity is within our control. You need a holy determination and comply with the laws governing spiritual growth. For you to become a matured Christian. The reason the enemy is messing us up so much is because he sees us as babes. Babies. So he's just tossing the person up and down. Christian maturity has no shortcut. There is no shortcut. There is no living thing on earth that becomes matured in one day. Even in the intellectual world, Students have to work hard. This is why the Bible says in Hebrews 6 1, it says, Let us go on unto maturity. Spiritual growth must involve determination and discipline, perseverance, effort. Christian maturity is not the possession of spiritual gift. That's why some people get confused. Say, but he's prophesying. Yes, it's different from spiritual maturity. But he's praying for the sick, they are getting well. Yes, that has nothing to do with spiritual maturity. He can speak plenty of tongues. Hmm? Yes, that has nothing to do with spiritual maturity. He can see. He has spiritual eyes, he can see things. Nothing to do with spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is different from spiritual gifts. A gift is a gift. That's what they call it, gift. You are not the one that made it up. It was given to you. Spiritual maturity is Christ-likeness. They are like Christ. Spiritual maturity is being Christ-like. In attitude. In words. In what you do. And so before you do anything, you ask yourself, what will Jesus do? What will he do? How will he react to this situation? Mature Christians, they are independent of fashions and prejudices. They are independent of fashions and prejudices of those around them. They know when to conform. They know when not to conform. They take people for what they are in themselves, rather than what their color is. They are humble towards others. They don't treat others like slaves. They don't pass judgment on others. If you are passing judgment on others, you are a spiritual baby. And you that you are passing judgment on others, you never can know how you two will end up one day. Spiritual maturity is ready to welcome and listen to what others have to say. They don't dwell on fears. This is a serious matter. For those who are students in the universe of spiritual babies, there are things you see in their life. 
And you will know that these are infants. They are babies. They pray. They go to church. They read the Bible. They call prayer points. But they are physically, chronically spiritual babies. The first sign of those in the universe of spiritual babies is prolonged infancy. They are spiritual dwarfs. Infants in Christ. They have stunted growth. Stunted growth. Why? Some of them are suffering from poor digestion. They have been feeding on milk, but not on meat. Milk is for infants. Strong meat is for the mature. The baby receives milk second hand from the mother. But a time comes when that infant has to be introduced to solid food. When you have not learned the art how to draw strength from your own personal Bible study. Let me be honest with you. You are a baby. They may call you any name. Superintendent, overseer, this, that, bishop. They may call you names. Those names are just labels on bottles which the Lord will remove on the last day. There will be no announcement in heaven that general overseer, so so and so, bishop, so so and so, come forward. No way. There are labels on the bottle. So if you, you, not somebody else, you are not able to take your Bible, listen, read, and you draw strength. He speaks to you. Then, my like baby, you are still a milk drinker. There is a limit to what you can hear in church. There is no preacher that can tell you everything. There is no Bible study that can cover everything. But with your Bible, you can sit down and read the word of God and meditate and you get a message from it, then you are growing. But if you are not able to do that, you are not willing to pay the price of serious Bible study, then you are a baby. Some of us, all you need to do is to take your Bible. Sit down. Read. Meditate. Instead of roaming from one crusade to the other, one mountain to the other, this to the other, that to the other, you reject, you neglect the word of God, you are going around prophets that you do not know their background. You don't know where they are coming from. We have so many pastors wearing collar who are native doctors in Nigeria now. They don't have any father in the Lord. You cannot trace them down to any church where they got born again, where they did Sunday school, where they did anything. You can't track their background at all. They are spiritual pastors. They have no father in the Lord. You say, hey, you say you are a pastor, but did you ever go to any Sunday school anywhere? Who baptized you? Why is about this market? Which junior Sunday school did you go? When did you get born again? No, nobody listened to those things. Nobody carries out any investigation. So somebody will just be preaching on the pulpit. He will remove his coat and throw it to people. And they will fall down. And people will clap. Clap. Coat has fallen them down. Clap for the man. Who threw the coat? Question. What has that got to do with your destiny now? If I stand there and begin to wave my I begin to wave my coat to you now and you are falling down, what does that do, do to your salvation? All it does to most of those people is that they fall down as a sinner and they stand up as a sinner and continue their way of life. And they think that is power. It is not power. But if you can draw power from the word of God, then you started a path to grow. I'm believing God there will be somebody here who will understand deeply what I'm saying now. So that the spirit of slavery that the enemy is cleverly using to distract your attention will be cast out from your spirit in the name of Jesus. So the first mark of the students in the universe of spiritual babies is prolonged infancy, stagnancy. Oh, so you've been in MFM for years. How many memory verses do you know? You've been in MFM for years. If I bring you forward here now, and give you a microphone. Say, don't call prayer point two. Just begin to pray. Just start praying. Will you be able to sustain just praying for 30 minutes non-stop? Could you do that? I've been invited to a place before. 
They said they were celebrating a choir anniversary many, many years ago. And so I got there as uh, just an innocent person. And when I got there, they gave me the microphone. I looked among the choristers, pointed at a lady. I said, Lady, sister, uh, lead us in opening prayer. Ah, I said, Sir, I don't know how to pray. But she knows how to sing. Can't pray. Immaturity. Two, students in the universe of spiritual babies, they are slaves to feelings and emotions. Slaves to feelings, slaves to emotions. When a decision is about to be taken, the question is, does this please me? Not, will this please God? They just want to please themselves. They are extremely selfish. Peter, the apostle, used to be like this. One moment he was walking on water. The next moment he's sinking. One moment he makes a glorious confession of Jesus Christ. That thou art Jesus Christ, the son of God. The next moment Jesus had to say to him, get thee behind me, Satan. One moment the same Peter pest protested that he will lay down his life for the Lord. But the next moment, he denied the same Lord three times. But at Pentecost, at Pentecost, the marks of immaturity had disappeared. That disappeared. Can you close your eyes again? Raise up your right hand. And shout this loud and clear. Spiritual stagnancy. I am not your candidate. Yeah! In the name of Jesus. Some people must break through here this morning. You cannot continue like this. Enough is enough. In Jesus' name we pray. So the first mark of the student in the universe of spiritual babies. Prolong infancy. Second one. Emotional slaves. And third one. Is quarrelsomeness. Quarrel. In First Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. From verse 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 3. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions. Are ye not carnal and work as men? For while one said, I'm of Paul, another, I'm of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Look at the same First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. Say, Dear any of you, having a matter against another, two believers have an issue, two believers are quarreling. Say, Dear any of you, having a matter against another, Go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. It is a sign of spiritual immaturity. When two believers have issues and they cannot bring the issue to their fathers in the law to settle, they have both gone to court, both gone to police station. Instead of saying, Let's take this issue to our fathers in the Lord. Paul said, Dear any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust. And not before the saints. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge you or at least esteem in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that I is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother go to law with brother. And that before unbelievers. Unbelievers. We take our cases to unbelievers. The mountain of fire and miracles ministry has not taught people to become cowards. If you find something wrong in church, write to your fathers in the Lord. Make an approach. Believers should not be quarreling and the unbelievers are selling them. 
Husband and wife should not be fighting in the house so much that people of other religions will come and say, Ah, you people carrying Bible here, you are fighting, don't fight each other, it's okay, don't kill her. And this is a very, very serious situation. If you are not happy about anything, go and take it up with your fathers in the Lord. Not going to social media, going to newspapers, going to Facebook and begin to write all kinds of things that you want to write. Thinking you are helping Christ, but you are destroying the cause of Christ. Because what you are doing is discouraging young believers and unbelievers. And one tragedy about Christianity is that sometimes when our soldiers receive bullets at war front, we end up hitting them more instead of helping those fallen soldiers. All forms of quarrelsomeness have to do with spiritual immaturity. Most babies are touched. Most babies have strong like, strong dislike. They can sometimes tend to be quarrelsome. The immature will quarrel over small, small, minor matters. There was a marriage that scattered within one week of marriage. And when pastors were trying to resolve the issue, what caused the quarrel? was toothpaste toothpaste the husband would be pressing toothpaste from the center the wife said no it's a waste I was not brought up like that you press toothpaste from the bottom so that none is wasted the man said no in my family we press it from the from, from the center so that the thing can come out quickly we don't have time to waste press center, press bottom, press center press bottom, they were arguing and that was the end of marriage Maturity will just do one simple thing. Buy one toothpaste for madam. Buy one for yourself. You'll be pressing your own where you like. Let her be pressing her home where she likes. Case closed. But they quarreled and broke the marriage because of toothpaste. Plenty of babies in the house of God. If you see somebody leaving the church, fighting at the car park, those are the babies. Sometimes you see people driving on the street. And we look at the vehicle, we see our logo. We wonder whether a stolen vehicle or is actually a member. Plenty of members who are spiritual babies are a disgrace to the mountain of fire because of their attitude outside. Grow up. If you don't grow up, the enemy will keep you in bondage. So, another mark of lack of growth is quarrelsomeness. Number four is worldly mindedness. You are worldly minded. You are living on the same plane as those around you. You are conforming to their standard. You are controlled by their motives. You are dominated by the desires that is dominating those around you. You say you are married to Christ, but you are flirting with the world. You are married to Christ, but you are not satisfied with Christ. You are married to Christ, but you are married to the world as well. There's one leg in the world, one leg in the house of God. One leg in the world, one leg in the house of God. Many fight, quarrel, fight, quarrel, argue with our men at the gate who say, Sorry, you can't come in here dressed like this. We're not interested to see the shape of your legs. Nobody wants to know how big or how small your breasts are. We're not interested. We don't want to see the chest of you, that man, how large it is. We're here to serve God. And when people go to serve God, there must be some form of spiritual decorum as a respect to the master. So the mountain of hell does not mind being called names for being strict on this. Those churches who thought we were strict before, they have not started putting in regulations. In one of those churches recently, there was, a, there was a notice by the front of the church that please, ladies who are wearing short skirts should not sit at the front. Also, they are beginning to see now. It is an abnormal thing. When you cannot differentiate between those going to church and going to a disco party, are you worldly minded? Then you have one sickness. The sickness is that the love of the Father is not in you. That's why you are worldly. It's a worldly person who cares what they are saying about the way you are dressing. 
You should wear this, you should wear that, you should wear this, you should look this, you should look that, and you are listening to them. And this is a serious matter. I am praying for somebody here. That the power to grow to that level, where heaven will bow, just like they bowed when they saw Stephen, that power will come upon your life in the name of Jesus. Another mark of babies is inability to discern between good and evil. Like our Bible teacher was telling us in the morning about discernment. Inability to say this is not good, this is bad. A baby Christian will ask, eh, what is bad about it? What's bad about it? But a mature Christian will ask, what is good in it? What's good in this one? Not what is bad, what is good in it? What do you get from here? So, this lack of sensitivity to evil, especially when that evil is masquerading, makes baby Christians easy prey to sin, to bondage, to looseness of these modern times, and to horrible infirmities. So, inability to discern, it's one sign of those babies. The sixth sign of those babies is domination by self. Domination is you, me, 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 look. Self is an idol. If you don't defeat that flesh, you don't dethrone yourself and enthrone Christ, there will be a serious problem. Paul said, I keep my body under. I bring it under subjection. Lest at any time, after I've preached unto others, I myself will be a castaway. The flesh is the reason why somebody will cast out devil, preach the gospel, and seek go to hellfire. The flesh is the reason why somebody will prophesy and sing and be usher and be everything and seek go to hellfire. You need to enthrone Christ, and then self is dethroned. The two cannot occupy the throne at the same time. Jesus' injunction is simple. Say, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. What does it mean, let him deny himself? Let him deny himself means let him remove self from the center of authority. Let him remove self from the center of authority. Let him say no to the flesh. The flesh say, get angry. Say, no, no. Drink alcohol. No, 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 no. He's craving and lost him. Say, no, no. Behave yourself, not at all. Behave yourself. You talk to you to, 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 to behave. You, you bring it under subjection. The reason the Bible says, I bring it under subjection is because the flesh does not want to stay under control. It's always rebelling. Bring it under subjection. Say, no, no. Ah, he's abusing you. Talk back. Say, no. I will not talk back. Ah, this thing is paining you. Ah, you gonna keep quiet. No. No. Don't say anything. And as you continue to practice subjecting the flesh, subjecting the flesh, subjecting the flesh, a time comes when that flesh no longer has dominion over your life. You have mastered how to dominate it. Doesn't control your actions anymore. Then you can say like Paul, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm a new person. Seven, sign of those babies is destructive criticism. Destructive criticism. Another mark of carnal Christianity is destructive criticism. Talk bad about people, pull them down, you, don't, you criticize for destruction, not for repair. I want you to know this point very well. Many who are so terrible at criticizing others, when they themselves are put online, they discover they can't do better. They cannot really do better. It's easy to just criticize destructively. But when you are there, you may not be able to even be a quarter as good as the people you are criticizing. The true evidence of spiritual maturity is the fruit of the spirit dwelling in you. So, don't be surprised if we hear they say a pastor is committing fornication. He has not conquered his flesh. 
although you have received a pastoral color, a Christian is telling lies. He has not conquered himself, although he is baptized in water. The flesh is an enemy in our camp. If you don't want to enter and continue as a student in this university, you need to understand those things that are obstacles to your maturity and pray those things out of your life. You see, beloved, many times when we have problems, it is because God is trying to remove certain things from our lives. Those things that stand in the way of our growing up. Sometimes God wants to remove it. If God looks at you and finds that you are an impatient person, He has a way of slowing you down so that you will learn patience. That patience you don't want to learn, you will learn it by force. Because one great sign of immaturity is impatience. But if you are an impatient type, God can introduce things that will be slowing your life down so that you can learn patience. If you are a proud person, because of that pride, God wants to destroy your life. He can make you to have to be reporting to somebody you are superior to. This is a very, very serious matter. I want you to understand this. Somebody comes to church, she prays, God answers the prayer, she employs a driver, she employs another person to just carry her bag. Now, no time for fellowship anymore. Comes late to church now. Basically, to start walking from the back to the front to display her headgear. And um, she has learned how to walk proudly because there are some proud walks. Proud walking. God said, My daughter, I want you to be humble. She didn't comply. Then God started on her. And she lost all the five cars. Went back again to her, taking the transport buses. This time, the enemy is not the devil. The enemy is God who wants to change her. If God found that your problem is that you can't, you find it difficult to be humble. God will make sure you learn that humility by force. By forcing you to serve under somebody. Somebody, the person may not even have a degree and you have a PhD. Will push you under people that you are, that are inferior to you. When God wants to correct this in your life. That is, if God is interested in your matter, He will begin to chastise you and to correct you. But if he's, if he's no longer interested, you just go on. Things will be smooth. Simply because you are being fed like Christmas good. That the enemy will now destroy later. What are the obstacles to your maturity? The first one is failure to take up your cross. According to Matthew chapter 16, Matthew 16, verse 21, Matthew 16, 21, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples, I must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things. And suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou sufferest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. What is the cross? The cross means where your own will and the will of God crosses. That is where the will of God clashes with your own will. You choose the will of God. This is what you want to do. But what the Lord wants you to do is different. You abandon your own will and follow His will. So carrying the cross means God's will is against your own, but you decided to follow God's will. Another obstacle to your maturity is the sick tongue. Sick tongue. One of the signs that shows that Christ is not in control of a life is the loose tongue. Saying things that hurt other people, the uncontrolled tongue is an obstacle to maturity. Fast tongues and those without the sense of apology. 
when they are wrong, they will talk themselves right into hellfire with the same tongue. Temperamental tongues. Anytime they are hungry, they give you the tongue lashed. Acidic talking. Those are obstacles to maturity. Unforgiveness is an obstacle to maturity. Our Lord's Prayer said, Forgive us our trespasses as you forgive those who trespass against us. The Bible now goes on to say, If we do not forgive those who offend us, neither will our Father in heaven forgive us our sins. Another obstacle is unprofitable comparison. You are comparing yourself to those who should not compare yourself to. Another obstacle is unconscious bondage, unconscious defilement. It is a serious obstacle to maturity when you think you are 100% okay and you don't need daily cleansing by the word of God and prayer and the blood of Jesus. A lot of believers who have collected demons before they get born again have to be cleaned up. These are obstacles to maturity. Six is neglecting the warnings of scripture. You neglect what scripture is saying. Seven is using carnal weapons to fight your battle. And eight is counterfeit baptism of the Holy Spirit. Before we start praying now, you must take an honest look at your life. You must see the reality of yourself. After diagnosis, a prescription should follow. To remove your name from this kind of university, you need a frank confession that you are not matured. You need to repent from being students in the school of babies. You need to determine to leave the elementary stages of faith. And you need to begin to get closer to Christ. By prayer, by word, by holiness, by obedience. You need to also engage in teaching others and exercising your own spiritual gifts. We need to understand. And until we begin to do this, and we are asking the Holy Ghost to extend our lives, and because what God wants us to be, we remain students in the universe of babies. Rise to your feet now. Rise to your feet. If you know the Lord has been speaking to you, right there where you are standing, lay your hands on your chest and begin to talk quietly to the Lord. That, My Father, it is time for you to take a very big nail and crucify me to that cross so that flesh will stop controlling me and flesh will die. Can you talk to the Lord quietly now? Lay your hands on your chest and talk to the Lord. In my life, in my life, there's a great river. Run. Teach me, Lord, to watch and pray and to read my Bible in my life. In my life, there is a great river. Teach me, Lord, to watch and to read my Bible. In my life, in my life. There's a great river. Wow. Teach me, Lord, to watch and pray and to read. Uh-huh. Send down revival, Lord. Let it start with be my soul. Holy Ghost Revival Pentecost Send down Revival Send down Revival Let's start with Him Hallelujah Holy Ghost Revival 
plenty cause thou fire. With a voice that roars like thunder. And for those who want to connect with heaven here this morning, it is important to pray that prayer of the psalmist. The psalmist says, Thou will revive my soul. Say, Though I dwell in the midst of trouble, Thou will revive my soul. It is that spirit of revival I want you to cry out for now. My potter, my caribou. I want you to cry out for that spirit of revival so that the fire of revival will enter into your soul. Can you shout this loud and clear? Fire of revival! I am available! Overshadow my life! In the name of Jesus! Fire of revival! I am going to pray now. Let your amen be dynamic as I pray. After praying, then I will ask you to start praying. It is important that you pray this from your heart. But as we start the process of this prayer, if you are that person here, you had a dream of the rapture, and you find that you, you were not raptured, God showed you that dream but you didn't see yourself going anywhere you need that spirit of revival in your soul this morning just calmly and quietly find a way to the pulpit here and be on your knees by the altar you had a dream that was rapture and you found that you didn't go anywhere don't take that kind of dream lightly find a way to this altar and be on your knees and cry to the Lord in these prayers. Whether you've had this kind of dream or not, all the same still cry out to the Lord. Something is about to happen this morning. Some people are about to break through. The spirit of stagnancy is about to be broken. And destiny is about to be repaired. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we are gathered here this morning. We know that you have a plan for our lives. An agenda for our destiny. At the same time, we know that the enemy has a plan against our lives. Father, I'm praying for all your children gathered here today. Every arrow of backsliding. Every arrow of prayerlessness, every arrow of spiritual weakness, a potter take a tender that has been fired into any life. Father, let the arrows backfire in the name of Jesus. Backfire, 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 those of you at the altar stretch your right hand towards me here those of you at the altar father your children at the altar here that are stretching out your hand that hot coal of fire that you place inside the tongue of Isaiah to kill completely his unclean lips that the coal of fire be deposited into the hands of your children at the altar here in the name 
those of you at the altar i'm going to count seven from here smite your chest that's where your heart is as you do the smiting fire will fall on some of you there and this yoke that has kept you behind shall be broken but do it very well one two look at what is happening already three four five let her go let her go let her go let her go i don't care whether you are from the water world whether you are from the forest six seven father i'm praying right now that every anti-heaven spirit every spirit of death and hell harassing the destiny of anyone here depart in the name of jesus Lose your hold, 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 in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Those of you at the altar, you may go back to your seat now. Father, any power that has been drinking the blood of anybody's spiritual life, recover that blood in the name of Jesus. Every agenda of darkness against the destiny of anyone here, I kill that agenda in the name of Jesus. Now it is time for you to pray. This is serious prayers. Don't say it doesn't concern me. In my heart, Death! in the name of Jesus, this is not a money to negotiate. Makatende kaya bo shentera basanda. This is not a day to negotiate. Jesus. Jesus. Aha. 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 Jesus name we pray you this lady you are in this service this morning but you are a prostitute the Lord wants to deliver you immediately we close this service find a way here and tell one of the ushers to bring you for prayers because already serpents have been programmed into your body which will take your life away in a few days you are that lady you are a prostitute you know you are a prostitute get one of the ushers to bring you and stop that activity from today you will shout this loud and clear powers assigned to take me to alpha you are a liar Death! in the name of jesus The 
Mana kantenda kaya boshe chera bosa. Wu papi alika di kasente yaba. In Jesus name we pray. Father, as your people go, cover them with the blood of Jesus. The Lord blesses you from Zion. Make his face to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. You go from strength to strength. And from glory to glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, all the prayer requests are answered them by fire. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Don't forget the manna water program continues on Wednesday. And you need to fast until we break our fast that day with the water. Let us share the grace of fellowship.